the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. The economics of it made us all identify by the color of our skin, so we became a people that weren't a people, just like with Israel. Even, but even by the same we weren't, time, we weren't bound together. There were still but there by were the same time. slaves that weren't weren't uh, uh, unified with other slaves because now, they were treated different. There, but when the society made a change, change, when the society made a change, it made a change concerning people that were had a similar demographic. The demographic of this people is us. The demographic of this people are, are the ones who now sit at this table and the ones who were socially deprived in this nation by law. God's hand moved on our behalf. Can I can I get an amen on that? Or did he just arbitrarily move and then nothing happened? No, God proved himself mighty for it. I think. Huh? Can I get John to sit and put up on the screen? Yes, sir. This talk is opinionated. We ain't saying a scripture here. You know? <laughs> it's coming one second. I'm coming. I move fast. I move fast. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand how we can get caught up in our opinion, but we're not here to represent our opinion. Yeah. Well, what is opinionated about? 50 some people getting the just up there making. What, what is opinionated about black on black killing each other up and making? What is opinionated about this music that we're throwing out in the street? Nothing, what is opinionated nothing. about the decadence and immorality that we are demonstrating on, on through the airway? What is nothing, opinionated nothing. about that? Nothing. It's the conclusion. I don't think it is, think it is either. No, it's the conclusion that you're drawing from it that's opinionated. And I'm going to put it on the screen and you're going to see it. I don't, I don't deny that those things are happening. I deny that God don't see it the way you see it. So in John chapter 16, uh, just for the sake of time, uh, Jesus is talking about, jump down to verse number 8. Yes, sir. Jesus is telling the apostle, listen, I got to go. Time has come. I got to get up out of here because I've got to go on to fulfill the purpose for which I said. I was sent. But don't worry, my leaving you is not going to be the end of the world. God is faithful. He is going to continue to provide for you. And so, he said to them in verse number seven, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Now, he's talking about the, the, the apostles, not the saved men. Mm -hmm. and so, it's, it's expedient for you that I go away. If I go not away, the comforter, he's not going to show up. Mm -hmm. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Yes, sir. Now, I'm not, let me start right there. Mm -hmm. If ain't no sin going on, why is he how are people going to have the evidence to know that they need to change? I, I, the, the sin going on is not, I don't think that's going to test our issue. I think the sin going on is obvious. Now you, I'll give you two hours. <laughs> if you haven't been getting sloppy drunk, how would you ever knew you needed God? Mm. The relevance, I don't, I don't, I don't get what it. What alcohol was doing in your life, God used that to bring you to a place to see your self-destruction. And what sin does, it exposes man's own self-destructive nature to himself so that that man can be convinced not by you, but by the Spirit of God. Okay, so he says that oh, oh, we're grace to the bound and sin to more So we said that we should sin oh. that grace to the bound? Whoa, 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 let me finish. I, I didn't stop you when you were talking. You talked for 10 minutes. You, you somehow seem to want to take what the Spirit of God is going to use to convict men of their need for God and it were it not for the loud music, not for the vulgar language, not for the, 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 the 
ungodly dancing. These people would never be brought to the place where there's conviction in their life that there's something wrong with me that makes me do these things that signify that I need God. That's how I got saved. I didn't get saved because I was holy and clean. I got saved because I was smoking marijuana every chance I get, sleeping with everything I could sleep with, and every party I could get into. But it was in those things that God brought conviction to my life. And you somehow not want to change that. And what I'm saying is you ain't going to change that. Oh, definitely. It's definitely. Gonna that, that, that I, would, I would definitely preach against that until I fall out. Because it's the thing that brings death into the lives of our people, saved or unsaved. Unsaved people are not going to even hear the words until they receive Christ. So it ain't a matter of drawing them or changing them. It's a matter of having those who are saved and say that they know the Lord being instructed in righteousness. They are bringing death into their lives. And we are, I say we, those of us who faith, we, we preach the gospel and that we know the ways of the Lord and we teach the ways of the Lord. Christ is not teaching anybody to go out there and be decadent and immoral. As a matter of fact, the, even in the New Testament, there's evidence against that. You know, he's not saying you need to go out there and, and, and exercise yourself in debauchery so that I might, that grace might more so abound. And even Paul spoke against that. So what did verse 8 say? What does verse 8 say? Now we, we want to get verse 8 now. Oops, I'm in the way. Sorry. Let me get this out of the way. Great. There you go. Can you it's bring it up? Yeah, can you bring it up? It's not up? It's not up. I thought I just shared it. Well, I'm sharing it. Can you, yeah, can you share it? What was I sharing? I just I'm sharing the, uh, the outline. Can you see it? Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does the rest say? And when he is come. He who? He who? Who is he? Jesus. Or the Holy Ghost. He will approve the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Stop right there. He will approve the world of sin. He. Let's get this. Let's, let's get this clear. He. And he alone. And until he does so, your criticizing, my criticizing, my pointing fingers ain't gonna change nothing. Until he convinces, ain't gonna be no change. And I can I think that what people ought to do, and until that happens, they ought to sin as much as they can sin. The deeper you get in sin, the deeper the strength and intensity of the conviction. I ain't gonna tell nobody to stop going to the club. I ain't gonna tell nobody to stop sleeping around. I'm gonna tell that joker, if you're satisfied, if your conscience is fine, you in it, hey, preacher ain't gonna do no good. But if he continues in that role, just like no. you can like role, and I continue, no, no. there is a point in your life when you're ready, and not until you're ready. There, there is a, I mean, just, just to, to understand the process is that, okay, once you have those ears to hear, once God has, has revealed himself to you, have accepted yourself in him, there's still instruction and righteousness that needs to be done in order for even the, the mind to receive what the Spirit is speaking. There has to be some kind of instruction there. And so I know he said that the Spirit of God said that he'll have no need that men should teach them, but they should be taught of God by himself. But he will be teaching through men. You mentioned many times before, you've heard people preach sermons and you knew it was God that was speaking through them. And I think that's that's what's happening to us similarly. So there are a lot of children out here that still need us. And our, they are our babies. These are our kids that are killing themselves out there. These are our young women who are out there shaking their boobies. And our young men who can't pull their pants up. And our young men who are walking cow to the will of God. And not all of them are coming out of unsaved environments. I know that that's true. There are some children out there you cannot preach this to or even start this conversation with because they ain't hear the first thing you said. Because they can't hear the words yet. They have not accepted Christ. Their minds are not even begin to be renewed. So for them, says the carnal mind is not subject to the things of God, neither can it be because they're spiritually discerned. For those who have truly been born again and those who are brought up and instructed in the righteous household, those of us who have children that we've given the admonition, bring them up in the way that the child should go, and then when they're older, they should not depart from it. 
there's an obligation to teach them the ways of God. There's an obligation to reinforce in them the ways of God. Sin is going to, sin is going to do its thing because it's going to kill them. You got you you constraining God to a box. I constrain God to the box he constrained himself to. I mean, these, these are the principles that he employed, not I. And he is the one that said, train your children up in the way that they should go, and when they're old, they shall not depart from it. He is the one that says the cardinal mind is not subject to the things of God, neither can it be for the spirit. Okay, hold on. So what is that thing called? Teaching you all the things that I've taught you. Rallying this stuff that you got in your head. Okay, so so what happened to a heathen? You get saved. You preach the gospel to him. Listen, in the Old Testament, a heathen didn't know none of this stuff you're talking about. They don't. So, so okay. we preach so the gospel. How are they supposed to get saved? Say again, huh? How are they supposed to get saved? The gospel, the gospel, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God to salvation of them that believe. The gospel is the tool that we preach to people that don't know how can they believe that they hear? How can they hear? This is they hear. I mean, how can they uh, how can they believe cease to hear? How can they preach except to be a preacher? Hear except to be a preacher, how can they preach to they be sent? So we are given the seed to plant. They receive that seed. They begin to, to they begin to germinate. Their minds are beginning to be renewed. They can receive and process the word. You see, so it, the process is amazing. I, I I really can't understand that because that seems as if as if you've been blinded by something. Let me explain something to you. Paul went to Ephesus. This is a heathenistic, ungodly city. He preached what? He preached Christ. So, so what were they doing before Paul got there? Being lost. <laughs> they huh. were being lost. You think they might have been shaking their booties? Uh, they were doing all manner of things in the cause of scripture, yeah. Uh, you think they might have been playing live music and saying vulgar things? In the cause of scripture, it's more probably. Okay. Now, how, they, does that, how, how, how does that impact us raising our children up to forgotten this stuff? Hold on. Did Paul take them into discipleship training? Or did he simply preach the gospel? They're simultaneous. They're being preached and they're being taught. Oh, they're I mean, the process is double time simultaneous. Paul take them aside and stop them from going to the club, stop them from drinking, stop them from having illicit sex, stop them from shaking their booty, or did he just preach the gospel? He preached the gospel because that's no, what he hold on. And when he preached the gospel, did Paul convict them or did the Spirit of God convict them? The Spirit of God convicted them. Now, now, and when they've been convicted, why aren't you satisfied with doing the same thing? I am satisfied on the street with doing the same thing, but what are we teaching our children once they come into the church or to the house of God? When they come to the door, you have no, 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 said this several times, we don't know what to do after we get in. It's like, you criticize the unsafe folks. Nah. Am I criticizing? Yes, I'm not criticizing the people, I'm criticizing the action. And for those of us who say that we are Christ, and condone or go along with this, no, 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 I'm criticizing no, no, no. them. No, no, no. If you have the mind of God, there is no way. Say what now? You big, but by my understanding, you consider you're criticizing the entire black race of people, including the unsaved people. I, what I'm criticizing is the action that we take up, up and, and, and these are things that we should put at the forefront of our push, yeah. even from the house, from the house, you know, I say the house, I mean the house of God's perspective. We should be pushing the gospel. And our, but Black Lives Matter is not going to help our people. Knowing Christ is what's going to help our people. Those That's the movement that has, to help, that, that has to take place. Because it is not going to, to say, okay, this, okay, we get all, and we've seen it. We have the Let's civil see. rights that we need. What? Those, are unsafe people. Those, are unsafe people. Those are unsafe people. Let me get but not all of them are unsafe people. Not all of them are unsafe people. And I know that to be true because I know some of them are that involved in the movement. But not all of them say that. Some of these people know Jesus and they push black lives more than they do Christ. And that is, to me becomes the issue. Isn't that our people, is it? Our people have known when yeah. we've been fighting for civil rights. And if King was on the planet now, all the civil rights that he got us brought us to a place where we could demonstrate the decadence that we are still, that's been still among you. Yeah, the I want to finish. I'm going to finish. <coughs> the problem with Black Lives Matter is, is that the majority of those young people out there don't want to have nothing to do with God. They don't want to have nothing preaching. to do with God. Now church. you preach it. Now you preach it. So, so now you preach it. I don't know why you would expect them 
to behave in any other fashion other than unsaved. Mm -hmm. now, now here, here here's, here, here's where, where I come in. As a citizen of the kingdom and one that's supposed to be trying to drive people, bring people into the kingdom, when we pick up the Black Lives Matter agenda, we draw our kids even further off from the God that they should be submitted to. It ain't black, black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. In the face of God, all lives matter. All souls are of God, so all lives matter. But as a body of believers, what are we pushing? Christ, are we pushing the kingdom, or are we pushing social justice? Social justice and social equality did not work for us on a spiritual level. I, 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 we, our people did not become morally righteous because all of a sudden they had civil rights. Look what we did with our civil rights. I pretty much got a problem. When you start when you start giving forth a principle that is supposed to be God's view of something that I know is not God's view. That's what I got a problem. I ain't pushing Black Lives Matter or socialism or any of this stuff. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is, is that we represent God the way God ought to be represented. And he I don't think from 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 from, I mean, from my perspective, I think God cares about all of that. Because all of it impacts us in some some manner or another. So he's actually attempting to save all of our souls. The thing that becomes, we either going to do stuff that's expedient, that's supportive of that move, or we're going to do stuff that's not. If I'm pushing black in, as, a, as a preacher or, 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 or a citizen in the kingdom of God, a teacher, whatever position they have, if I push Black Lives Matter beyond the gospel or ahead of the gospel, then I'm really leading these kids in a, in a path that's really not, it's not conducive to, 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 to salvation. You can get civil rights. We see that. But what happened to the people that got the civil rights? We, we have seen the manifestation of our struggle, of our 60s and 70s struggle, King's life devoted to this cause. And what are these people doing? It's not, it's not white people lynching us in Macon. It's black folks shooting each other like dogs, down like dogs in Macon. So what happened to us? We got the civil rights. It's not white folks calling us niggas. It's us calling each other niggas. It ain't white men calling or, or opening in the in the society singing. I mean, making songs about bitches and hoes. It's us. We're the ones doing that. And so, with all our civil rights and all of our Black Lives Matter and all this push to the front, what happened to us morally? What happened to us spiritually? Where's our relationship with God and all that? And that's the thing. I think that's the thing that concerns me because I'm, I'm there with it every day. I'm seeing it every day. I'm watching it. I'm watching the play itself out. I love, I have not an issue with Black Lives Matter because I think all lives matter. But if we're going to be given that spotlight, let's use it to an effective Can reason. I